Hello Internet, I'm Kevin King and today I'm going to show you how to set up your Ringo and install the software. Let's get started. Okay, before you can start installing code onto your Ringo robot, you need to install a few items on your computer first. The first step is to open a browser window and visit plumgeek.com. Scroll down to the Getting Started link. On this page you'll find links for the drivers that are necessary for the programming adapter, the Arduino software environment, which is where you'll actually write your code, and the software libraries. This is required by Arduino in order to compile some of the code for Ringo. Let's start off by installing the drivers. It's uh, recommended that you do this before you plug the programming adapter into your computer for the first time. Uh, some computers will incorrectly associate the programmer with the wrong driver if you don't do this first. Uh, if you're on Windows, go ahead and click the download link for Windows. Uh, Mac download is right here for OS 10.9 and later. And if you're on an earlier version of the OS, you can get the driver here, which is for 10.3 to 10.8. For Linux, you should not need a driver. Uh, Ubuntu 11.10 uh, 11 and later uh, does not require a driver. If you do have another version of Linux, you can try this driver right here. I'm on Mac, so I'll click the download. The driver will download into your downloads folder or wherever you have your browser set to download files to. It's usually your downloads folder. And for Mac, it's a DMG file, which is a disk image. And for a Windows machine, it will be an EXE file. Go ahead and launch that. It's the standard type of installer that you'd use to install any other kind of software. Follow the prompts through and that will install the driver for you. Once the driver is installed, go ahead and download the Arduino IDE. If you have an earlier version of Arduino already installed on your computer, you can probably use that. Uh, we recommend 1.6.5 or later. Uh, that's the current version right now. Uh, we've discovered that 1.6.5 tends to compile programs a little bit smaller, and for some of the larger uh, preloaded behavior uh, collections, you might need 1.6.5 to compile it small enough to fit on the processor. Follow the link. This will take you to the official Arduino uh, software download page and go ahead and select the version for your operating system. I'm on Mac so I'll click that to download. Give them a donation if you can and give that a couple of minutes to download. Once that completes, go ahead and open up your downloads folder and unzip the archive. Okay, for Mac, it's going to decompress the single Arduino application. It's just this one icon. There's not really a setup install process. It's just this one item. Uh, for a Windows machine, it's going to uh, create an installer for you. So it's like an EXE that you'll launch, and that'll run you through the installation process to ins install the Arduino software. Normally, you'll take this and drag it over to your Applications folder for Mac. On a Windows machine, it'll make it available in your start menu like any other program that you would newly install. For the Mac, you can go ahead and also grab this and drag it over and put it into your dock also. It'll make it quicker to launch in the future. Go ahead and launch the Arduino software, and it's going to go ahead and boot up. It's important to do this before trying to install the libraries. What this is going to do is it's going to create inside your My Documents folder a Arduino folder. And so there we go, it just created that for me. And that's where uh, the Arduino software is going to store its sketches. Inside of it, it also creates a libraries folder, which is what we're going to use next for installing the Ringo software libraries. Once you've got that folder created, go ahead and quit Arduino. And go back to your browser. Back on the Getting Started page, scroll down to the bottom and look at the link where it says Installing Ringo Software Libraries. Go ahead and click the Download. and it's a really small file so it'll download really quick we're gonna open that up it's in my uh, downloads folder here we'll go hunt we'll go ahead and uncompress it and looking inside you're gonna see three folders these three folders need to be copied inside the libraries folder that was created by Arduino we'll do that now once those have been copied over, then your computer setup process is basically complete. Let's go ahead and grab some software now and we can show you how it actually opens up inside of Arduino. Before you physically hook up your programming adapter to the computer, go ahead and install the drivers first. To connect the programmer to your computer, you'll need a USB cable. The correct cable is a USB A to Mini B cable. We don't actually supply those because most people have a drawer full of them. Go ahead and attach the programmer and then connect Ringo to the programmer with the supplied cable.
You basically want the cable to look something like this. So it comes straight up and off, curves around, and then it goes right into Ringo's side with the same orientation, just like this. When you connect the cable, make sure you connect it to all 10 of Ringo's pins. It's really easy to connect it to just the top row. And if you connect it correctly, if you have everything hooked up here together, you should see the red light come on right here, which is Ringo's charging light. The cable should basically look like this once hooked up. It should move smoothly from the board straight over onto Ringo and make sure you don't have it twisted. That's the only reason it wouldn't work. Once you have the cable hooked up, you're going to want to turn Ringo on before programming it. And that's it. Back on the Plum Geek page, slide down to the Getting Smart icon. On this page, you'll find links to the Ringo Educational Guide. You can download the complete guide right here or individual chapters down here if you want to do uh, classroom instruction based on the chapters. Let's go down below to the reference code. We provide the reference code in four different categories. There's the preloaded behaviors as a complete single collection. So it's the entire collection of all the behaviors all together that can be activated with the remote control. And then we also have provided the preloaded behaviors as individual sketches. So if you want to take one of the behaviors and build on it, go ahead and grab the individual copy of it. It's a little easier to follow because it doesn't have all the menu and everything to select the multiple behaviors. And uh, it allows more, more space on the processor for you to expand the behavior. The base sketch is basically a template. It's a blank template, but it already has all the libraries and all the background functions already linked into it. So you can just open that up and go right into the loop function and start writing your own code right there. We also have some companion code. This goes along with the Ringo guide, and it's uh, complete standalone examples of some of the examples that are in the Ringo guide, so you can see how the entire thing works together. For right now, let's go ahead and download the preloaded behaviors collection, and we'll show you how you actually go about loading this onto a Ringo. It's going to download into your downloads directory. Go ahead and unzip it, and it's going to create a single folder. Now inside this folder, you have a few different files. There's the main sketch, and then there's all these other supporting files, which are going to turn up as tabs inside of Arduino. You want to go ahead and keep these all together. We're going to take the entire folder, we're going to copy it, and we'll go back over to our Arduino folder. So that's inside my uh, documents, Arduino. And for uh, Windows, it's my documents and then Arduino. Let's go ahead and create a new folder in here and we're going to call it Software from Plum Geek. And we'll copy it inside that folder. All right, now that that's created, let's go ahead and launch Arduino again. This is the default Arduino sketch that opens up. And it's basically just a blank holder, and it's the very bare minimum that you need in order to compile anything for Arduino. We're not actually going to use this one, but once we're inside the application, we're going to open up the preloaded behavior collection that we just downloaded. So we're going to go to File, Sketchbook, Software from PG, and then we'll open the behavior from right there. You can go ahead and shut down this other window. Go ahead and expand the window out so you can see a little better. So this is the file of preloaded behaviors, and we're going to get into this in another lesson, so we're not really going to cover what's all in here right now, but the idea here is just to show you how you actually load this software onto your Ringo. The first thing you're going to do is go up to Tools, and you're going to select for the board Arduino Fio, which is right here. Once you've got that selected, go ahead and plug your programming adapter into your computer. You're going to connect the USB cable between the adapter and your computer. And you can go ahead and plug Ringo in also. Connect Ringo to the programming adapter. Once the programming adapter is plugged into your computer, you should be able to go to Tools and Port. And you should see a new port pop up. By default on the Mac, you see some Bluetooth ports right here, and eventually you see this USB serial port. That's the one you want to use. So go ahead and select that. On a Windows machine, it's just going to show port and then some number. It'll probably be a number like 2 to 5 or something like that, but it could even be another port number that's really random. Uh, just go ahead and select the port that, that appears. If you're unsure of which port to use, go ahead and unplug the programming adapter and then wait about 30 seconds and then go back to the tools menu and look at port again and you'll see that the entry that was in there before has disappeared. I'm going to go ahead and plug it back in now and we should see that entry reappear. We'll give it a few seconds and then refresh it. And you can see it popped back up there, the USB serial port. 
So when you're clicking around, you'll also see this programmer heading down here. Now this doesn't do what you would actually think that it does. Uh, the short story is go ahead and leave it set the way it is. You don't need to change it. It has no effect on what we're actually going to do here. Uh, this is basically used uh, if you're going to use the Arduino software to burn the Arduino bootloader onto a fresh processor that's never been programmed before. And so you're going to select which tool you're going to use to actually get the bootloader onto the third new chip. And we're not doing this in this case, so just go ahead and skip it. Don't get hung up on this. Okay, once you have those items set up and you've got everything connected, go ahead and turn on your Ringo. That's uh, sliding the switch forward. And then you click the Upload button. You're going to see down here that it's compiling the sketch. And once the bar gets to about here, you'll see it start to upload. And you'll see the lights start to flicker on the programming adapter while it uploads. This sketch will take about 30 seconds to upload. It's rather large. You can see that it actually accounts for 98% of the programming space that's available on the processor, and that's because we have all 10 behaviors on there. Normally the stuff that you write won't be quite that large, and it'll, it'll load a little faster. Okay, so if you got the done uploading and you don't see any problems or errors here, then you should be good to go. You should have all of the 10 behaviors loaded onto your Ringo, and you should be able to now go and look at this list on the preloaded behaviors on the, on the web page and see the behavior list. And you go ahead and push the corresponding button on the remote control to kick off each one of the behaviors. If you want to switch from one behavior to another one, go ahead and hit the reset button on the side of the Ringo. Some of the behaviors you can get out of by pushing the menu button on your remote control, but not all of them. You can experiment a little bit and figure them out. A couple problems that you may run into is you may have a problem uploading. I'm going to go ahead and turn Ringo off and re-upload on purpose to show you what that error looks like. This is a common thing that you'll run into from time to time when you forget to turn on Ringo. Whenever you see comments like this, this basically just says, hey, that the programmer is not able to talk to the Ringo. And that can be due to a couple of things. It can either be that the Ringo is not connected properly, so you're going to want to recheck your, your connector between the programming adapter and the Ringo. Uh, make sure that when you plug it into the Ringo that you actually have it plugged into all 10 of the programming pins and not just the top row and also make sure that the power switch is turned on on the Ringo. If it's been a long time since you played with Ringo, uh, the battery might be a little low, so you might just plug it into the programming adapter and let it charge up for a couple hours before you try it again. So eventually this thing will time out and you'll see problem uploading to board. And if you try to kick it off again, uh, you may get the same error right away again. And the best way to clear it out of here is to disconnect the USB cable from the programmer and let it sit still for a few seconds and then plug it back in. And that kind of clears out all the garbage from the port that's in the operating system. Um, I don't know if that's an official fix, but that's the way I've found it myself, the best way to clear these sorts of errors. Another thing that can happen is later on, once you start playing around, you're going to be using this serial monitor a lot. And occasionally I notice that if I have multiple uh, windows open with several different sketches open at once that I'm working on, and I have the serial monitor open for one of them, and then I go to the other one and I try to upload from there, uh, it tends to trip over the serial port for some reason. So just go ahead and clear, clear out of the serial monitors. And then, like I said, go ahead and disconnect the USB cable from the programmer and then reconnect it and then try to upload again. And you should have your errors cleared. Let's kick this off one more time with the switch turned on. And if you get both the lights flickering on your programming adapter while it's loading up, then you're good to go. So that's it. You've got software loaded up on Ringo. Come back for the next lesson and we'll talk about how this software actually works and how you can start playing with it and actually writing your own fun behaviors. Thanks a lot.